See, I started working out again, so even though I'm injured, I'm slowly getting my butt in movement and uh, trying to get back in shape from the, I guess it's been seven or eight weeks since I got injured. But anyway, uh, in today's video, I want to talk about the million reasons why you try to tell yourself now is not the time to get clean. And what usually happens in my experience talking with people is that you get fed up with the way your life is going, the way that you feel you're tired of the revolving door of being sick, using to feel normal, being sick, using to feel normal. So you get to a point where you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. So you're gung-ho. I'm not going to do this. And you're usually feeling this way when you're high. Okay? So you're gung-ho, you're planning everything, you're ready to rock, tomorrow I'm going to start, so on and so forth. So most people, they, they make it through the 24 and they feel like shit. And that's when the voice in the head starts kicking in. Maybe now is not the time to do this. Maybe, maybe we should wait till Christmas break when I can have a week off and you know, I can have time to myself and you know, you know the game. Your brain's gonna, the voice in your head is gonna tell you a million different reasons why now is not the time to do this. But the truth is that it's never a good time to do this, all right? You're gonna be uncomfortable. So you're gonna think of a million reasons why now, why you don't wanna be uncomfortable right now. Because that's just human nature, you know? Just like when people are sick, like the last thing on the planet they wanna be is sick, so they'll do whatever they can to get better, whether it's eating chicken soup, resting, eating, drinking a ton of fluids, so on and so forth. So when you're withdrawing, you know that if I, if you want to get, feel better, you just have to use. And you could do this some other time down the road. The truth is, is that a lot of people don't have another shot. Okay. I can't tell you how many people I have personally talked to, not just friends and that I know from around here and, but people I've tried to help that don't text me or call me anymore because they're not around anymore. And that's just the way life is. If you want to keep playing Russian roulette with this stuff, it's your business. I'm just making this channel so you understand that there is another side to this. That you can get past it and be happy and not be a slave to a substance that just completely rules your life. So when that voice kicks in your head and starts telling you, you know, now is not the time to do this. Maybe we should just tell, shut the F up. Now is the time. This is the only time I have. Okay, and the truth is, now, right this second is the only time you have. And you're not promised tomorrow or the next day or anything. So stop wasting your life numb on this crap. And spending all your money on it. And, you know, just living either in a standstill of life or you're going backwards. And forever forwards, man. You just gotta, you gotta figure out now is the time I need to go through this it's gonna suck but I need to do it and thousands of people go through this a day okay and they make it so don't give me reasons why you can't I did it and I'm just Joe Schmo from New Jersey all right so today's email comes from Jennifer now Jennifer says my name is Jennifer you can use my first name if you wanted to talk about this on your video so I've been using opiates for nine years. I was first prescribed hydrocodone, Lortabs, 10 milligram for six years, five times per day. Now for the last three years, I've been prescribed oxycodone, 10 milligram Percocets, four times per day. I was lowered one per day due to pretty much all the pharmacies in Florida will only fill four times per day, no matter what the opiate milligram is. I honestly took my medication as prescribed for, four, for six years. The first time I ran out was two months before I was changed to oxycodone, but I was only a few days short. My tolerance at this point has gotten a lot higher, and they just do not even work anymore. My back constantly hurts, and I've been coming up over a week short of my prescription. I'm tired of depending on these pills to be the perfect human with the perfect house and the perfect job and the perfect everything. I just want to live my life like I did before I start started taking these. I don't even care if I become a lazy person at this point. At least I will be 100% myself without anything to enhance who I am. 
So I've tried to go through withdrawal and I feel like such a loser because by day two I ask a family member who also has a prescription to help me out until my next doctor visit. Two years ago I had the best blessing I could have asked for. Finally in November of 2013, one month before I turned 27, me and my boyfriend of seven years, now nine years, found out we were expecting. I was 100% honest with all of my doctors about my medications. I wanted to make sure my son's health was put first and foremost, of course. So they just explained to me, because this wasn't a planned pregnancy and I was taking the meds I was taking, it wasn't safe to stop during pregnancy due to the possible early labor. My doctor told me he would probably have to withdraw when he was born, anywhere from two to six weeks. Unfortunately, he did. Luckily, it was only nine days. The nurses told me he was the quickest baby to get released and did amazing. I was literally at the hospital the entire time and didn't leave his side for one second. I couldn't. I did feel kind of good during this horrible self-hating time because all of his nurses said I was the only mother they had seen stay with their baby the way I did. And because a baby needs their mother, that is probably why he did so well given the horrible circumstances. I went through the withdrawals with him because I couldn't take anything to help me feel better and know he had to go through that, so we did it together. I so wish I wouldn't have relapsed on day 14. It was my doctor's appointment that day and I, for some dumb re reason, decided I would go. I regret it so much because I was so far into sobriety. The furthest I had ever been in all... Furthest, been, furthest I had ever been in at the time, 8 years. So now I stopped working back in May to stay home with my son since my sister who was watching him while I worked said she decided to go back to school and I wanted to stay home with him anyway, at least until he turns 2, July 23rd next year. So with not working now is a perfect, perfect time to do this. But now, now, this is what I was talking about before, but now I have a 15 month old running around who needs me to be 100%. This is my question for you, for me. What do you think I should do? Time out. Go through it now. I'm not even going to read the rest of the email yet. I know what it's like to have little kids in the house. I have a two-year-old and a, I guess she's nine, nine weeks now. And you can tell by looking at me that sleep, you don't get sleep anymore. You're running around like a, a crazy person. I work a lot. And I know what it's like. But when your kids are young, they won't remember a week two weeks of you being a distant parent. It's not like you're not going to be doing what needs to be done for your child, but, okay, you're not going to be going to the park every day and you're not going to be doing the the amazing things that most mothers do. But just remember, it, this this will pass. It's, it's better to get it done right away. So I'm going to go back to your email now. And she said, but now I have a 15-month-old running around who needs me to be 100%. This is my question for you. What do you think I should do? I talked to my mom and my boyfriend's mom about it, and they said they will help. Awesome. They are both taking a week off for Thanksgiving, so I think this, I think that is the perfect time. But my boyfriend tells me to man up and get through the withdrawals now. Now, your boyfriend... He may not have any uh, issues with opiate dependence or, or an addiction or abusing anything. But in this instance, he wants you to get it over with because he's probably extremely worried about you. And my personal opinion, I'm not a doctor and I can't give health health advice. And this is if I was you, I would do it now and keep going. I just tried to for the last two days and I felt so bad because I was not able to play ball with my son and make him cook food. I had to microwave crap food. I feel like I like to feed him healthy cooked foods. And he was bored and crying. Should I do it now and be a crappy mom for seven days or wait for Thanksgiving week when I was offered the help? I know it takes a long time. I remember last year, the first week was horrible, but my mother, my mother's strength kicked in and my adrenaline was pumping, which helped a little bit. Even day 14, I was still having horrible cramps and going to the bathroom like crazy, but between eight, between day 8 and 14, that's what I was left with, and a lot of emotional issues. I've been taking them for so long, I'm also afraid I'll be depressed for a long time, or even for the rest of my life. Sorry this is so long, but I haven't been able to find much advice from my mother's perspective. 
I know you're not a mom, but I figured I'd ask you anyway. <laughs> LOL. Oh, um, by the way, my son is absolutely amazing, and he has excelled past kids his age and everything. He's an extremely smart, beautiful little boy. Thank you. Okay, so uh, like I said before, I highly recommend that you go through it now. It's gonna it's gonna stink. You you might have to microwave your kids some food for the week and not give them fresh food, but uh, your child's not gonna remember it. He's young. He uh, will not remember you feeling under the weather for even if it's a week or two weeks. Now, as far as the depression goes, you you have doctors. I would go and talk to your doctor, explain to them what's going on with you. They might want to help you out with the medication. Some some people go on to an antidepressant to help uh, spark some things going on in the in brain chemical situation. Um, just something you should talk to your healthcare provider about. And... Uh, Talk to a medical expert about that. And uh, just do it now. I know it's going to stink. Wow, this is a long video. I know it's going to stink, but you need to do it now. It's, think about your son and your, and your, your boyfriend. And uh, think about your, your life in the long term. All right? Any questions or comments, please leave them below the video. If you'd like to share your story, email Ryan at CompSport.com. In the subject line, put YouTube story, my story, and let me know if you want to use your name or stay anonymous. All right? Keep watching. Sorry it was so long, but it was a good email. Have a good one.